Hi, I'm Brian from Dr. PC. Uh, today we're going to talk about things you need to know about domain registration and web hosting. First, I'm going to start with some definitions. What's a domain name and a TLD? A domain name is a unique name that you and only you control for the entire world. A TLD, top level domain, is part of the domain name, the part that's after the last dot, like we've got .com, .ca. There are several TLDs in use today, and more are added periodically. For example, of course, .com is the most common, and .ca is a CC TLD. It stands for Country Code TLD for Canada. There's MX for Mexico and JP for Japan, etc. Some of the other um, uh, top-level domains are uh, .biz, .org, .net, um, and you'll see a whole bunch of different ones. Um, now, when you're getting a domain name, the, the important things to remember are there's a, there's a length uh, limit on your domain name. It can be no more than 67 characters, including all of your uh, .com or whatever. Um, also, it can only contain numbers and letters and the hyphen, and it can't start with a hyphen, so it can start with a number or a letter. Um, so when you're, when you're registering a domain name, you have to keep these things in mind. Also, the... Um, the uh, name needs to be easy to remember and easy to pronounce and intuitive as to how the pronunciation goes with the spelling. So instance, for instance, if you have a word like center, it can be spelled C-E-N-T-E-R or R-E, and uh, you have to make that as intuitive as possible so that your customers can find your name. The next thing we're going to talk about is registry, registrar, and registrant. Domain name registration is a connection of these three levels. The registry is the entity that owns the TLD. For example, .com, .net, they are owned by a company called VeriSign. .ca is owned by CIRA, which is the Canadian Internet Registration Authority. And uh, the registrar, then, is the company that you deal with when you want to register your own domain name. Several registrars to choose from, some very ethical and some, well, not. And the registrant, that's the last person, that is you, the owner of your specific domain name. Technically, you don't own the domain, but you lease it from the registry. But as far as our purposes, we'll refer to it as ownership. Now, the third definition I want to get into is a web server. A web server is a computer that's connected to the Internet and runs software specifically designed to serve web pages and other such content. These computers run 24-7 and are never disconnected from the Internet. Your site is always available to anybody in the world at any given time. If we have to do maintenance on these computers, we can't even take them offline for more than a minute or two. Just rebooting them, uh, you know, that can't happen very often because at that time that they're rebooting, you have no connection to the Internet. The next thing I want to talk about is an IP address. An IP address is a number set. It's in most ways like a telephone number. Each computer connected to the Internet has to have a unique number so that it can be found. If you try to connect the second computer with the number that's already in use, it won't work. Then there's DNS resolution. We have a system whereby the numbers, which are very hard to remember, are converted to names that are much easier to remember. This system is called DNS. The registry contains a group of name servers for each domain. In your domain record, which you, um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, um, there you have set name servers, and the name servers are software, basically. They're queried each time that a request for the domain is sent over the internet. The name servers respond to the request with the IP address, and then the requester goes to that IP address to find your website. So um, without the numbers, your domain name would do nothing at all. This entire process only takes milliseconds. So when the domains move from one host, but when the domain name is moved from one web host to another, the name servers need to be changed at the registry level, and I'll talk about that a little more later on as well. The next thing is the definition of disk space quota. Just as your home computer has an internal disk drive with very finite amount of space, so does the web server. To prevent the system or any other user from running out of space, limits are usually put on the amount that any one user can take up. And the same with bandwidth. Think of your water meter or your hydro meter. The, uh, these things measure the amount of that service that you have used over a given period of time. Since data transfer is not free, in fact, it's one of the single biggest costs associated with web hosting, it needs to be metered so that any one person's usage does not impede any others. The next thing I'm going to talk about is what to look for in a host. The first thing, first and foremost thing that you want to look for in a web host is a unique IP address. Many low-cost web hosts save money by putting several hundred or even several thousand websites on one IP address. 
There are several reasons to have your own unique IP address, but two of them are very, very important. The first reason is your own IP address will never be used by anybody else, especially for the sending of mail. If you share an IP address with somebody else, especially several hundred or several thousand somebody else's, and just one of those people sends out spam, your IP address will be blocked by most mail servers, thereby preventing you from sending any mail at all. The only recourse you have in this situation is to change web hosts or sign up for a different email provider, in effect changing your service. The second reason is if there's ever a problem with downtime, for instance somebody goes on your website and finds it's not available, it can make it infinitely easier to diagnose, you know, because if the problem lies with the web server or the name server software or the domain name itself, if you have an IP address you can check that against the, um, against the site and if it resolves that way then you know the problems with the domain name itself. Also, when you're changing your web host, you know, you're moving from one hosting company to another, you can still access both the old and the new sites simultaneously, one through the domain name and the other through the IP address. The next thing you want to look for in a good web host is reasonable limits on disk space and bandwidth usage. There are many web hosts out there that will offer very high quotas on disk space and bandwidth for a very small cost. I've even seen people advertising unlimited disk space. Well, I've just mentioned before that a hard drive in the web server is very finite, and so it's absolutely impossible to, um, to offer unlimited disk space because it simply doesn't exist. Uh, be aware that these companies that are offering these high, high bandwidth and high disk space, they're selling the same disk space and the same bandwidth to each and every one of their customers, so that if somebody else uses up their space, you won't have your space left. Often in the fine print they will tell you that they will decide based on criteria that are completely up to them when you have used too much. The next thing you want to look for in a good web hosting company is an easy to use control panel. When you have a web hosting service there's several settings that you may want to, want to or need to modify in order to make your site work to the best of its potential. If you have to call your web host each time you want to add or delete an email address or change a password, it might not get done as quickly or there might be service charges for the extra effort that the host has to put in. Having an interface where you can do these things yourself helps greatly. Of course, if you aren't comfortable making any changes or playing with the internal settings of your hosting account, which a lot of people aren't, you'd be best to have a host that offers this personal service at no extra cost. They will either walk you through things the first few times or look after these things for you so that you can get on with what you're best at, your own business. Now we're going to talk about what you want to look for in a registrar. As I said earlier, the registrar is the company that actually you register your domain name through. And the first thing is the ability to easily manage your domain information. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you change your web host, your name server settings have to be changed. and That's the DNS settings on your on your domain name and they have to be changed to reflect the new host that you are using. If you change host or your email address or mailing address changes, it's absolutely imperative that you make those changes with your registrar. So many people have lost their domain names because at renewal time the registrar could not contact the registrant due to this info not having been updated. If your registrar does not provide an easy way to make those changes on your own, you should probably transfer your domain name to a registrar that does. And again, if these functions are way beyond your comfort level, it always helps to have a registrar that can, at the very least, hold your hand and walk you through these changes. Choose a registrar that has a live person you can speak to on the phone or by email. Now, we're going to talk about things to consider when changing web hosts. Now, the first thing to consider is that you want to change your web host before your current account with your current web host expires. Because of things like time it takes to, um, to change the DNS for the DNS to resolve to your new IP address and all that sort of thing, you want to make sure you have at least two weeks to, uh, to make the changeover. So what you do is you find a good web host a month or so in advance, make, a, make an arrangement so that you can set up your new account, your, your new hosting account, within about two weeks before your current one expires. Then you upload your site, you make sure all your settings are correct, and then only after your site is completely operational on your new host do you then change the DNS in your, uh, with your registrar. And uh, that's after having set up your, your, both your content and all your email accounts and whatever else has to, uh, ha that has to do with the, with the uh, 
hosting account, and then once you've um, once all that is done, you change the DNS with your registrar, and then only then do you wait for that to resolve, and then you cancel your or let your other account expire with your previous host. So those are just some of the things that um, that you need to know about when you're dealing with web hosting and registration.